in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah when a man truly has an encounter with god one of the things that must happen is transformation 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 a change of mindset a change of values a change of ideology a change of perception something must happen to your mentality listen the word of god is a programming the word of god is a programming i told us last week i went somewhere for a, a crusade and they were asking me they say what is the advice to nigerian youth i said i don't have any advice for the nigerian youth the nigerian youth they don't need an advice they need a programming a change are you getting my point now a change let me have someone. Aaron, good to see you. Hallelujah. Watch this. If this is the direction Aaron is headed, all right? If he's following this direction, I hope you know that he's taking this step based on a mindset. Is that true? Based on an ideology, based on a conviction, whether academic, whether cultural, whether religious, it doesn't matter now what the word of god does is that when you collide with god through his word there must be a force from the word greater than the force that was initially driving you and that force changes your state this is what we call repentance to repent is not just to confess your sin to repent is to lay down the ideology that take you into that realm and bring you into a new philosophy so that we can look at you and see that your thinking pattern has changed let me tell you if your thought life does not change if your mindset does not change you can limit god in your life hallelujah the bible says they limited god in the wilderness as mighty as god is a man's mentality can limit god for a long time god wanted to bless abraham but the mindset of the traditional worship the mindset of the culture he was coming from limited god god kept beckoning on him i want to make you a father of nations i want to make you great but abraham's mind could not cooperate with that which the spirit wanted to do and one day the lord said abraham come out of your house I I need to do something to your mind to align with my purposes for your life abraham come out he said now look at the stars let me give you something to play around with and when he tried counting the stars he said can you count them he said no he said so shall thy seed be finally abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness hallelujah the power of God is not short to change and bring miracles and breakthroughs. It's just that we have been taught. And, and, and it's my job in the body of Christ to always address imbalances and error. On one side, we've been taught that everything depends on God. You have no role to play. You just be born again and there is a smooth ride. Common sense teaches you that it does not make sense. Are you following me now? then on the other hand we have men who are struggling just using concepts alone and human philosophy forgetting that there must be a god factor in the equation of your life both extremes are very very wrong all through scripture from genesis to revelation there has always been a partnership 
between God through his spirit and a willing vessel that can pay the price and allow his mindset to subscribe to the higher values of heaven. Hallelujah. The difference between brother A and brother B is not the color of their skin. It's their degree of alignment to the Holy Spirit. How much they have submitted their mindset to take up the higher mindset of the values. Listen, the Bible says my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Is that true? And, and that word, the, the, the Greek word, word there, word of God, is logos. It means the thoughts of God. So the word of God gives you his ideology. When you read my books, you study my persuasions, you study my convictions. Is that true? So if you stay long enough with my books and you open up yourself to the influence of my thought patterns, you will begin to think like me. Even if you've never met me, we will talk as though we've been together. This is the ministry of the word. It's not just to make us speak Christian language. No, the word of God is supposed to transcend. It produces a force. That force compels your mind to change, to align to spiritual things. So that when God wants to pass through your life, your ideologies will not resist him. Hallelujah. Bless you, Aaron. Everybody say transformation. Are you being transformed? It's not enough to come to church and sit down and keep writing. It's the word of God changing you. You can limit the power of the word of God. Some of you can choose to walk out of this place. Wow, nice sermon. So this is how koinonia is like. Wonderful. I'm impressed. I'm blessed. That can be your... The, the, the things that you are carrying back home. And someone else can sit down and say, Lord, I'm aware that my mindset is the reason why I am where I am. My mindset has been limiting your work in my life. You want to bless me, but there's something in my life that resists you. You want to lift me. You want to make me great. But there's something and I am aware. So I come to man. He needs to step into your soul realm and take compassion charge of your mind your mindset so that your ideologies are a derivative of the word of God not culture there are aspects of culture that are good there are aspects of culture that are devilish devilish they were crafted out by wicked men sponsored by spirits that are not under the influence of the spirit of God and many of us have grown up with these ideologies and although you've gone to school although you are working although you are married that mindset is stopping God from doing certain things in your life many of us have gotten mindsets by from our past you have a mindset concerning fatherhood you have a mindset concerning marriage you have a mindset concerning money concerning prosperity concerning poverty concerning God concerning the Holy Spirit these are all mindsets that have been given unto us by a system that does not honor God so when we come into his presence we do not come just to say Lord add to what I have sometimes you need to say Lord open me up like a surgery right and pick out everything that does not align with your divine pattern everybody say transformation listen if the word of god is truly changing you then regardless of the fact that aaron is from kaduna state and ken is from the east you should have similarities in mindset because you have you have laid down your personal culture to pick up the excellency of the culture of a higher kingdom hallelujah but the issue is that many of us love seeing the power of God. We love seeing the grace of God. We love seeing people fall under the anointing and miracles happen. And there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that is the word of God changing you. The, the decisions you made last year, if you still make those decisions today, in spite of the power of God's word, then that's what they call frustrating the grace of God. Hallelujah. 
the bible says the days of our ignorance god overlooks right so if you do not know god can create a system by his mercy to help you but where the word of the lord comes it comes to build you it comes to take you out of your current position hallelujah say i allow the word of god to change me say it i allow the word of god to change me the worst evil you can do to yourself is to hold on to your mindset hold on to what you had that made you such a failure it was the failure that brought you to the presence of god and now god is saying lay down this thing pick up another culture that can take you your ministry is grounded because of a mindset that is keeping you lay down that mindset and pick up another your marriage is not working because there is a mindset that is keeping you your relationship is not working because there is a mindset men run away from you because there is a mindset women run away because there is a mindset the power of god is far favor is far from your life because there is an ideology that stands as an antichrist but when you come to god's presence it tells you lay down this mindset lay down this mindset that's your own responsibility to say lord all my life i've been taught that you must be a hustler to make it hit it left right and center i saw my father hustling i saw my mother hustling i saw my elder ones hustling and god says uh -uh, the kingdom of god is not haphazard come and let me teach you how the economic system of the kingdom works and you're like lord is there even a system and he says yes there is you can walk circumspectly hallelujah all your life you've always known that if a lady wants to marry she'll go to a herbalist with the picture of the person he wants to marry and one goat that's all you've seen people around you dragging goats to herbalist to chain a brother and force him to get married that's how you know it to be done now you are ready to get married and they say oh yeah where is your own goat and god is saying uh-uh uh-uh he says seek out of the book and read none shall want her mate so a new ideology starts coming and i'm telling you if you are changing it will create blessings and create persecutions at the same time because you live in an environment with people who have refused to change so your change begins to frustrate them if they are not fighting you you are not changing are you hearing what i'm saying something must change about your life everyone is used to bribing if you want job give this person through the back door 50,000 and they tell you look we're all Christians in fact I'm a pastor as you see me like this we all did it and the moment you want to do that a scripture rises up in you something changes is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am and a scripture wells up in you what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness and what communion has light got to do with darkness and you turn and tell them i'm going to cry but my god will give me this job i will not bribe anybody no bribery and they say look at how stupid you are talking nigeria this thing has been there he said uh -uh, i may be a nigerian but i function from another realm there is a kingdom that sponsors my life and i'm an ambassador and i can call on the embassy i represent it may take a while i may look stupid but god is able to make it happen the moment you speak you mount pressure on god because he's the one you are representing and for the sake of his reputation you cause him to step down but many of us are ashamed at such points you say i went to school how can i start talking about embassy heaven i please let's let's be reasonable what is fifty thousand? hallelujah before now your ideology has been 
the quickest way to be rich is pin down one rich man just find a rich even if he's not born again you will change him pin him down force him to marry you that's how they've been taught and there are many people here as you're sitting down some is your parents they've indirectly warned you they say have we not suffered in this life they say yes we have suffered they say do you want us to continue like this they say no sir they say talk complete the puzzle by yourself what they are telling you indirectly is that no matter how born again this brother is once he has not arrived the promises are not there pack your load and go and some of you that's how you are looking and god is sending a very godly brother you are seeing him pray here he's sweating in your presence he's hearing the word of god that can change but because he has not gotten to canaan while you are sitting down kicking away men you will see a quick work that god will do in him all of a sudden saul who was a slave or a, 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 a somebody else will come in power and glory and you will now look and say ah oh god why didn't you show me a vision that this guy would change so fast say mindset say it some of you are already angry it's too early i've not started preaching it's too early this night could it be that there is a mindset that is frustrating you there are many pastors who are suffering and struggling in ministry because their mindsets about ministry will never change i said it last week they are looking for lifting quickly they want everybody to call them a pastor you call them aaron they say aaron you didn't add pastor that's a mindset because you think that is the title that gives the dignity He said if you call yourself the children of abraham do the works of abraham prove that you are the children of abraham indeed you don't move around saying i'm an apostle i'm a prophet i'm a teacher he said let her works speak for her at the gates who is god speaking to tonight your mindset is limiting him your mindset is limiting god your mindset is limiting God. Every brother that comes to marry you, something happens and he leaves. We have prayed for you. We knew the day you were delivered. So we are sure you are delivered. But things have not changed. That means there is a mindset problem. Listen, it's not everything that is demons. You must learn to take responsibility. Many of us receive solace in the fact that demons, when you hear them say it's not your fault, you say yes, I've always known. It's your fault this night. You must take responsibility i've always known from my father's house they want to kill me but you were delivered everybody saw that god changed you why have things not changed because your mindset is a bigger demon an antichrist that is standing between canaan and egypt hallelujah there are christians who still cheat in the exam hall they say forget it i saw a pastor doing it with my own eyes ah i even know him if i mention his name you i saw him so what hallelujah what about living all kinds of immoral life in the world the primary purpose of relationship is for immorality it's not even for marriage it's just a an official way of looking for a partner to be sleeping around with so when a guy thinks he doesn't have enough courage to look around for ladies he goes to find somebody and say okay we're in a relationship they don't even know where they are going hallelujah and there are believers who love god some of you are here you are looking at me you see i'm not condemning you but i'm saying that 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 god must come face to face with the world and when it comes one must bow you cannot embrace these things and say let's go together it can go we can walk it no you cannot walk it light and darkness cannot stay in the same place don't say it does not matter let me tell you the truth if you want to see the authentic glory of god in your life no it matters and i always say this because many of us here are young people 
don't let anybody fool you and say everybody is doing it no sir there are people who have tapped into a higher law the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord until you climb that hill it does not look like it's possible are you getting my point I counsel people i talk to people and there are people who come and say i love god but i women hey i, I can't see women i don't ah, is it really true that there are people who are keeping themselves it's not by determination hallelujah if it's by determination maybe i would have had children that that would do children's service for koinonia but there is a grace that takes you so although you are human people say i beg jerry you are flesh and blood no but there is a spirit that lives inside you the bible says know ye not that your body listen choose to believe this this night don't let it sound childish to you choose to believe if it was not possible god would be a wicked person for putting that as a principle hallelujah transformation there are some of us who can kill for money that's your own mindset you overcame ladies from bed you don't even have a problem with ladies because you you want to make it even if a lady stands naked in your front once there's no money on her you are living you are not the devil can the devil has been defeated when it comes to that one but money ha, ha, ha. you can be dying if they wave money you come back to life there are people like that they love money they can just put money on their table and just be looking at it like this they are not using it is is doing is like a drug they are taking your worst time in church is when they say giving of all sorts even if they don't mention you the fact that somebody else is going to drop money you take it past now You are not giving but just seeing that money is leaving somebody is it, paining you something is moving in your body advise this guy to take it back it's a spirit it's a dangerous spirit hallelujah there are many of us who have certain mindsets of laziness laziness hallelujah a man will sleep till one o'clock in the afternoon you are a man when do you want to marry next year till one o'clock you are still sleeping and you will see one of our sisters who has been trusting god preparing herself like a bride for a very nice person you just believe that because we say hug one another in koinonia it gives you a license to just get up carelessly and just go and meet a sister and say shabby they say let's get to know one another no are you preparing for that future i'm challenging you tonight say transformation what mindset have you refused to drop down romans chapter 12 Can you imagine that I've not even touched my message? Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12. Say the word of the Lord is changing me. Say it is changing me. It's building me. Romans chapter 12. Okay. Let's just turn there. I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be ye what be ye how do you get transformed by the renewing of your mind you get transformed when you take your mind to the theater of the spirit and a surgery is performed 
the spirit of God himself and the surgical knife is the word of God that is able to cut across the bones and the marrows and it opens you up and begins to edit your life and when it is done you come back a brand new person hallelujah there are many of us those around you who are unbelievers there's no pressure that your life is bringing to them in fact they are more they are comfortable a guy can i'm not talking of condemnation and just pointing fingers at people and say you are going to hell no but that there is an illumination that your transformation can bring to anybody that is not serious with god that if somebody's prayer life is dying he doesn't even need to tell you all he needs to say is can i come and spend weekend in your house or in your room and they are so sure that at the end of three days something will change in their lives hallelujah there are some channels if you are walking in sin you will never want to turn to those channels perpetually 24 hours you will hear a message almost immediately within a space of five minutes that will judge you dove tv redeemed rtm you know that once you are doing something wrong you want to look for another channel that can accommodate what you are doing when you turn to those ones you hear papa adebo just give five minutes something is already flogging the nonsense in you can your life be like that that people are gossiping and and talking stories about others and as soon as you step in everybody just keeps quiet because a true ambassador stepped in one who will not compromise not that when you step in say hey come add add to this discussion what what were you even saying that they know hallelujah that in your office when they are mentioning men and women of integrity your name must be mentioned and they know that no if you want to throw this person try it another way bribery will not work even if it means him being demoted just forget it there is no issue of having a meeting with him it will not happen come on now listen if this is not happening in this place then we are wasting our time i don't care how many people fall on the ground roll on the ground even if you float in the air if it does not translate to transformation in your life then we are lying somewhere hallelujah so is your mindset changing ask your neighbor say is your mindset changing what did he tell you ask him who can verify that you are changing you can't call somebody that you bought something for in the afternoon to verify whether you are changing or not the answer will certainly be yes your enemy is the only person with the right to testify whether you truly fear God or not it was Satan that came to testify about Job is that true Satan himself he said ah no come on now I've seen a man Job Satan the father of all liars a man's integrity compels Satan to tell the truth he said I know I'm a liar I can twist things but this one there's nothing I can say against this man May that be your testimony. That somebody can look at you and say, I know, I hate Ken. Let me tell you, I hate him. But when you are talking about a man who is a Christian indeed, I'm an, I, I'm an unbeliever. As you see me, I don't fear God. I, let me go to hell, but I can tell you, this person, have you seen people like that? They don't respect God. They look at you and say, see, see cigarette in my pocket but I can point to you who are the real men of God and you even be talking it was in Antioch when unbelievers called this set of people Christians those who were behaving like Christ 
not religiously something had happened to them see if your mindset does not change and you are trying to fake it it will frustrate you are you getting what i'm saying one day you will be tired if you don't have a revelation of giving and you are giving 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 one day when there's nobody you say kai i'm tired honestly thank god this my wicked roommate is not going to follow me for koinonia today i'm tired that's how you can see many people serve in the body of christ immediately they leave to another geographical location within two or three months they've changed in a way you'll be like uh -uh, this brother used to lead prayers what suddenly happened they really did not get it i'm telling you there is a way you get it it becomes like a cancer in you no matter how much you fall you can't go too far the, the, the fraternity is too much it's like a cult when you see people claim to love god and two months away from an environment of god's presence they just change they really did not get it you can be among believers i hope you know doing what everybody is doing but everybody knows the foundation and the root where he's standing and the bible says let he that stands take heed lest he falls so number one transformation number two three things that must happen in your life you're ready number two is that your life must bear fruits it must produce results write it fruits results the fruit in a tree is a sign that that tree has been well nourished and that it is alive and growing jesus caused a fig tree not because he did not see green leaves he caused the fig tree because it was taking up nutrients from the earth but it was not producing fruits your life must prove that god is at work in you not just by transformation transformation is good we talk about character and conformity but there must be results in your life everyone say results bishop oyedeko said the end of every argument is proof you don't argue with proof are you getting my point now when john the baptist sent that they should go and ask jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus did not even answer he just turned started healing the sick casting out devils he said go and tell john what you have seen is this not the evidence that was given to him in the wilderness that the messiah would do now see me doing it why are you asking again hallelujah when you are a christian and you are excellent in your job they give you a task to do you do it with with a dimension of intelligence that is not known to those people there is a proof there are you hearing what i'm saying when you keep loving god and you get to a point look let me tell you if you serve god with time everything around your life should change i'm not one of those people who believes that you should just sit down of course in the process there are lots of things to contend against but with time there must be fruit that sign upon your life that god is with you even if you work for the devil even if you work for the devil one day ultimately he's going to destroy you but at least in the interim you will reap the benefit the ben the evidence of allegiance is that true there are all kinds of worldly people who are bowed to Dagon and although they are going to hell if they do not repent but in the interim they are enjoying heaven on earth at least that's the consolation to keep them Satan took Jesus to a mountain and said Jesus if you will bow to me I promise you I, uh, I have I have not started preaching no. that's the problem you will just look now and see that it's past nine I wish there was a way I can throw all these clocks out of this this place. There's so much in my spirit to share. Hallelujah. Everybody say results. Say proofs. If you claim God is calling you in a healing ministry, it's okay that when we start, nothing is happening. 
but with time there should be the signature of god upon your healing ministry i do not know any healing evangelist who organizes a crusade and god does not confirm it if he's a true healing evangelist somebody should be sick somebody should arise from the wheelchair i do not know one true person who carries the apostolic spirit of god who struggles with fear and timidity and does not have the power of faith and the work of god in their lives i do not know one person like that except they are just talking stories are you getting what i'm saying say after time in the name of jesus may my life produce results many of you this is the level you are right now the reason why nobody has listened to you or subscribed to your ideologies is because they have not seen the benefit is that true and and and, and i want to be very honest with you benefit in every area of life financially maritally job wise in every area of your life no matter how critical people are let me tell you proof can close the mouth of anybody are you getting me you can criticize a man the greatest way to respond to your critics is not by answering don't waste your time they are determined not to understand keep trailing the proofs let the works keep speaking at the gates a point will come those they are talking to will say i'm tired of hearing your stories you waste your own proof hallelujah when jesus hung upon the cross about to die the bible says the atmospheric condition the climate just changed and those who looked there they just remembered and truly they acknowledged even in death they saw something there are many of us it will just take one proof everybody say one proof one proof for every unbeliever in your house to bow down they've grown in poverty they've suffered in poverty although that's not an ultimate reason to push them to god but trust me prosperity can bring men to god hallelujah when every herbal medicine has failed when every blood substance they they died in the leather and they told your father to chuck in the pocket of all his trousers to bring prosperity when he has put it in every pocket and it refused to bring prosperity and you come teaching the principles of the kingdom and things begin to change come on now you don't argue with proofs hallelujah may your life produce results in the name of jesus christ may you not be like the barren fig tree a fig tree with green leaves that means they are seeing you coming for koinonia every week every week to an extent that others can look at you and mock you and say where is your god i prophesy to you your god is coming through for you in the name of the lord jesus your god is coming through to silence every pharaoh that attempts to mock your god your life will produce result in the name of jesus christ results i believe in results i believe in results many of you are here by the grace of god not necessarily because you love me some of you don't even love me at all you don't plan to it's just that you need the results hallelujah but you are still welcome and the power of god is such that the results can be reproduced again and again and again that's why i love the anointing of the holy spirit you don't need to refrigerate it you don't need to give your neighbor to keep it for you and collect it on except you use talisman that's why i worship him take his presence and his glory out of my life many of you will see me on the street and pass as if you just saw a tire on the floor that's why i feel sad for people who want to come out of inferiority and complex and kick they kick god out of the equation and they believe they'll be able to rise without him impossible impossible 
if you are tired of your condition the greatest way is to embrace god first hallelujah because god will take you out of every situation results your life must bear fruit in the name of the lord jesus christ say my life must bear fruit go ahead pray in one minute pray in one minute I don't just want us to talk it as stories my life must bear fruit my life must bear fruit my life must bear fruit I've been born again for many years no soul has come to the kingdom as a result of my life Lord I'm tired I've been praying for the sick. I don't have one verifiable testimony. Let this change, oh God. Everyone I've prayed for for breakthrough, they've returned with worse situations instead of making it better. But Lord, I've told them you are with me. Change my story. The finance of my family has not changed. Lord, I'm not loving you just because of finances. But if my finances change, my father will follow me to church. If my finances change, if my loved ones get admission, they will come to know you. For their sake, oh God, let there be results in my life. Please pray. I sense that God wants us to pray on this issue. My life must bear fruits. My life must bear fruits. My life must bear fruits, oh God. I'm tired of a barren and unfruitful Christian life. My ministry is not growing. Pray because there's no proof. My God, people come and they leave. If there are real miracles, if there are real transformations, they will come and stay. Everyone mocks my family in spite of our spirituality because they have not seen God change our level. Turn again, oh God, the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Let men see an evidence that God is with us. Pray. Say, Lord, let the marriage come, even if it is to prove that Jesus is alive, to prove that the witches and the wizards and the devils in my village do not have the final say. Lord, I know that there is a cause of poverty that lingers in my family. But I've confessed your word that it is broken. Let it show in my life as a testament so that idol worship can stop in my family. We have no right to tell men to stop going to harvest if we cannot produce the proofs that God is with us. We have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get children if we cannot heal the body we have no right to tell people to stop going to the devil to get money if we cannot prove that god prospers people lift your voice and pray get angry change my story change my story oh god i have served you in spite of the result but tonight I hold on to you. Change my story. Pray, Koinonia. There is a spirit of intercession that has come upon the house. Pray. Change my story. Change my story. Change my story. Prove a point with my life. Make me an object of prayer. Silence the voice of wicked men many a day that rise up against me many a day that say where is his help but i will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help 
my help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth oh god let there be a difference between those that serve you and those that do not serve you come on saints of god travel for your destiny there must be an evidence you have been transformed but there are no results there are no results men have a right to speak against your god lord hasten my miracle come on pray hasten my miracle hasten the breakthrough please pray god is answering people in this place lord give my father the job although my auntie is past menopause give her a child as a sign and a wonder that god is alive although my sister is 40 years old give her a husband that men may know that god is alive although my father was sacked from the job give him another one oh god to prove that you may be a prophet over my family lord you have vowed to increase my greatness produce results in my life come on koinonia pray produce results in my life that can silence men produce results that can prove that my god is alive i love him more than the results but in this season i desire to see the result command it command it increase my greatness let the blind see through my hands oh god for your glory pray let the wheelchair arise to silence principalities and powers open the heavens oh god and let prosperity come upon my life where i'll be rejected no man wants to identify with me make me an eternal excellency come on are you praying koinonia and a joy of many generations hallelujah 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 we'll take one prayer point before we settle down you are going to pray and say lord every power that stops my miracles from the heavenlies so that men will keep mocking my god tonight i command you to give way come on lift your voice and pray daniel prayed for 21 days the angel came and said daniel from the first day that you set yourself to pray your prayers were answered but the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, the prince of Persia, pray i subdue powers i subdue powers that operate in the heavenlies territorial spirits i subdue powers in the heavenly realms i subdue powers workers of evil You must bow there is fire in my life there is fire in my destiny to burn every chaff everything god has not planted shake it off shake it off shake it from your life i shake away witchcraft i shake away divination i shake away enchantment come on now shake it off in the name of jesus no power can stand i am an infant of fire no enchantment no curse can stand against my destiny pray your prayer will bear fruits it will produce results pray the effectual fervent prayer 
is our season of greatness. We went war against poverty. We went war against sickness. We went war against the works of darkness. It's our season to arise. Come on now, pray. Make your life too hot for the devil. Make your life too hot for witches and wizards. Make your life too hot for wicked spirits. Break the yoke from your neck. Break the yoke from your shoulders. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Tell the devil I stand in my priestly and my prophetic office tonight. I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. I confront you by myself. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 There must come a time in your life where you stop getting afraid and rise up and say, Satan, I've had the word enough. I don't need to wait for Friday again. Come into my room like Mount Camel. Let's solve this problem once and for all. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. They've not laid hands on me for nothing. One more time, we are going to pray. Come on, pray. This is breakthrough prayers. This is breakthrough prayers. I sense the spirit of prayer and supplication. There is power when you say the pray. There is power when you pray. Make contact with the spirit. There is power. Pray. Enough is enough. Where is the devil? Where is the devil? By the power of the prophetic prayer, resist the devil. He will flee. Hallelujah. I feel an open heaven. I know when there is an open heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. I taught you on the speaking blood. We are going to apply the blood of Jesus. You are going to say, Satan, this is the price to release my destiny. I invoke the blood. Come on now, Koinonia. I invoke the blood. Every sacrifice that has been born and made, I invoke the blood. The blood of Jesus. I invoke the blood. I challenge the gates of hell through the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The Christ. Jesus, 
Alléluia. 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 Listen. Come. Let me have four people. Let me show you what prayer does in the spirit. Let me just have four people stand here. Just, just turn like this. Face it. Stand. Just stand behind. Watch this. Watch this. Someone come and hold this. Anybody? This is your miracle. This is your breakthrough. But watch this. Stand there. Please shift forward. Paul said, listen. He said, a great door and an effectual has been opened unto me. He said, but many, many, many are the adversities. These are the spirits. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Watch this. The Bible says, if any man afflicted, let him pray. If any man afflicted, let him pray. When you begin to pray, watch this. There is a force there is a force of the spirit that begins to mount pressure 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 on all of these things it's an ability of the spirit you push through barriers by the power of god's spirit until you take what belongs to you listen listen that's why god gives you one of the reasons why he gives you the prayer language of tongues praying in your understanding will weary you after 20 minutes the bible says you may not understand the dynamics on how to confront this spirit but when you switch to that prayer language the holy ghost hey yeah, 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 yeah. the holy ghost listen when you begin to pray something in the come on pray When your prayer life rises, the devil must let you go. If you can't pray, she cannot let you go. If you can't pray, she Hallelujah. See, listen. There is a way you can pray. You will know when you break through. The reason is, the truth is, many believers don't pray. Hallelujah. There is a way you can pray. You will know your spirit is lifted from that realm. You will know an audacity comes upon you. You know you can shake off evil. Hallelujah. 
One more prayer point. Before you sit down, you're going to say in the name of Jesus, I take back everything the devil has taken from my family. Prophesy. Shita. Hallelujah. 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 The hand of the Lord is upon me. And I want to prophesy. As I prophesy, the power of God will be causing breakthroughs and restoration. The anointing of the spirit is strong upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I command every power holding anyone down right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you, let them go. Let them go. Right now. Let them go. I prophesy breakthrough. I command breakthrough. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command breakthrough Amen. to your family, breakthrough, Amen. financial breakthrough, Amen. breakthrough in health, Amen. breakthrough in your academic, Shepard. breakthrough in your job, Shepard. in the name of Jesus, Amen. open heaven, open heaven, Amen. it's your season to rise, it's your season of greatness, Amen. every power stopping you. We challenge it tonight Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please sit down. God bless you. Be seated. Your life must become uncomfortable for anything that is not of God. See, I tell you the power of God is, I sense such a strong anointing resting on people. As I teach, God is going to be visiting people in very strong ways. Enough is enough. God gave us a word. He said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. I'm not sure I can go into the details of tonight's teaching, but I hope I'll be able to touch. I really have a very serious revelation that I want to share. Let's see how far God can help us wherever we stop. Hallelujah. Genesis 1. Verse 26. The Lord gave us a word that this year for us is a season of light and dominion. It's not just a word 
like many ministries have a word at the beginning of the year hallelujah light he said they that sat in nefta and zebulun have seen a great light a great light genesis 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let them this man i hope you know that when he was speaking the woman was still in the man because man adam not the name of a man dust hallelujah man was first created body has thou prepared for me hallelujah and then he brought about a separation between the man and the woman but before then he blessed them and he said let them have dominion now listen it is in the character of the spirit that the same word that brings you prophecy is the same word that prepares the way for that prophecy to come to pass are you getting my point the bible says when at the brook cherith when the brook dried he told elijah the prophet he said get thee go down to Zarephath." he said dear i have commanded a widow to feed thee but the woman did not sound like god had informed her a prophet was coming however the same word that took elijah to Zarephath was the same word that softened the heart of the woman so when god gives you a word the word follows you through and makes sure that the path is clear until that word comes to pass are you getting what i'm saying so when god said let man have dominion that means there must have been a provision for that man to access what it takes to walk in that dominion hallelujah god does not just speak empty talk it's like sending a man to the market and not giving him money so let's see how god equipped man to exercise dominion in reality hallelujah genesis chapter 2 i wish we had time but i'll just touch briefly wherever thank you jesus verse 8 and the lord planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man that he had formed and out of the ground made the lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food now watch this everybody look up the bible says god made every other tree to grow from the ground are you following me however the bible says there were two trees those trees did not grow from the ground follow me are you getting my point the bible says god made to grow every tree pleasant to the eyes that is good for food then it says the tree of life also also in the midst of the garden and then he says and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil please follow me i want to teach you powerful spiritual laws that can help you to walk in dominion to eat of every tree including the tree of life are you getting my point the first revelation i want you to have is that man's eating the tree of life was not for hunger are you getting me adam could not be hungry he was not in the fallen state are you getting me in the realm of the spirit you don't eat for hung for hunger you eat for impartation and knowledge that's what food does in the spirit food does not satisfy hunger no no when you eat food like let's say in spiritually now i'm not talking of all these demonic things that people you saw yourself eating sweet in the dream that's not what i'm talking about hallelujah you don't eat in the spirit to satisfy hunger food does two things for you in eden's atmosphere one it gives you knowledge two it gives you impartation hallelujah that's why the prophet was giving 
the word and he ate it when he ate it he did something to him are you getting what i'm saying now watch this everybody write the mystery of forbidden knowledge that's not the topic i want to show you what the two trees were supposed to represent one was the tree of life the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil another word was the it, it carried what we call the mystery of forbidden knowledge the word mystery just means hidden truths about a knowledge that god does not want his people to know not because he hates them you must understand this god does not want us to know everything and then i will show you what the angels came and did the fallen angels when they came they did something to the daughters of men are you getting me they took from this forbidden knowledge and they began to feed mankind with it ah. time, 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 time. praise god god categorically warned man he said the trees in the garden of eden every time you eat them they will do something to you are you getting what i'm saying so if you eat of the tree of life it will keep giving you the revelation and the insight to walk in dominion it gives life eating of that tree gives life are you getting me that's the mystery of eternal life adumbrated by that tree that's why when jesus came he said ah, ah man shall not live by bread alone if man wants to live he must keep eating something are you getting me so walking experientially for eternal life to be culminated in you there is something that must be done in you please listen and this is where i want to balance this is what where we get the concept of immortality how many of you have heard all those teachings of immortality now unfortunately many people brought the teachings but they did not understand how the operation immortality is not something you claim immortality is a product of eating of the tree of life again and again it causes eternal life not just to translate from your spirit to your soul but to happen in your body and that's where you say oh death where is your sting are you getting what i'm saying now it so happens that our rate of transformation is so slow are you getting me now that the degradation of the sin nature in our body catches up with us before these capsules of rejuvenation find expression in us this is why although the law of immortality is at work not many people will ever enter it the secret is not just prayer for long life the secret is intercoursing with this eternal life that was how adam was supposed to live forever are you getting my point now so by eating of the tree of life that was why when he fell god said no you can't eat of the tree of life again because the tree of life keeps you in whatever state you are and stops you from dying if he ate of the tree of life salvation redemption would not be possible again so god drove him out are you seeing that now god didn't just drive him because he was angry he drove man out of the garden because he loved him praise the lord what is this i want to explain to you what is this mystery of forbidden knowledge look up how many of you have heard of certain books called the books of moses right 10 books of Moses, 11 books of Moses. How many of you have heard of all these extra biblical references that were written by Egyptians and written by all kinds of people? Have you heard of those kinds of things? How many of you have heard of people that lived long ago in mountains who wrote certain books that were found? Now listen, if I don't teach you this because the Lord began to reveal to me that this is the strategy the devil is bringing when the angels do you know why god did not want man to know i hope you know that adam never knew adam never knew that before his coming there was a history hallelujah he had never eaten of the tree that gives the knowledge of good and with it comes evil are you getting me 
Adam was supposed to eat of the tree of life and continue his intimacy with God and reproduce children after his kind. When Satan came into the garden, Satan did not make Adam sleep with a dog. No, he knew that that would not get the agenda done. He said, man, come. There is one tree I want you to touch. Just taste it once. It will do something to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everybody say forbidden knowledge. This is the information that through sorcery and witchcraft, please hear me, the fallen angels and all of these aliens and all of these devilish spirits, they downloaded and brought to inhabitants in the earth. Are you getting me? These were the informations that were given men like Nimrod. So they had super intelligence about certain things. Are you following me? I want to shock you. I hope you will believe me. Look at me. Did you know that most of our technological advancement, are you getting me? Are as a result of fraternity with beings that were not in the earth. Are you getting me? It had to be a supply of a level. It's not just human discipline. Don't mind what all those books tell you. Just be hardworking and think well. No, sir. Those people had interactions with beings. Is that how did Solomon become extremely rich and blessed? What happened to him? God visited him from another realm. Is that not true? They had a conversation. Listen, this conversation is still happening in the earth till today. Are you following me? Let me share with you something very briefly. I hope you believe me. The Bible says Jesus was giving the parable of the wheat and the tear. Is that true? He said, while men, everybody, while men, hold on. He says, while men slept, something happened in the earth realm where men were sleeping. Now, the sleeping is not bad. We always use that sleep to mean while men were backsliding. No, he meant literal sleep. That means there is something that cannot happen when men are awake. Are you getting me? Jesus was telling us something powerful. He says the moment men sleep, some beings can walk into the earth. And he said the enemy quickly comes, plants something and goes his way. So you wake up with a growth that was not there before you slept. Is somebody following me? What happened? Who came and put it there? while men slept are you seeing why the bible says the keeper of israel neither nor it says every time men sleep something happens in this earth realm there are certain beings that come into the earth realm that's why people sleep in the night and in their dream realms they have all kinds of encounters with beings and animals and all kinds of things happen from intercourse to eating to every kind of thing and they wake up the next day only for them to fail at work or fail in exams something happened while men slept the psalmist saw this in psalm 91 and he says thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day right not the noisome pestilence but many believers are dull of understanding dominion dominion is not just a function of i claim it there is spiritual intelligence that can bring you into that position where you walk in dominion are you hearing what i'm saying please are you getting something so this tree of the knowledge of good and evil was never supposed to be consumed by man are you getting me look, look at me when you open that book you will find good 
but you will not know when evil is planted in the good are you getting what i'm saying that's why a pastor can go and read the 12 book of moses or go and read scientology and be looking at it and saying wow so candles or certain things can do something to witches and wizards everybody say forbidden knowledge are you getting that now and then they read certain zodiac books and they look and they say why not i add this knowledge to what i already have are you getting what i'm saying and they will seem to walk powerfully that is the forbidden knowledge the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sometimes we celebrate it what do we call it rema is that true and we bring all kinds of things i've heard about men of god and prophets and all kinds of people who do every kind of nonsense in the body of christ all kinds of magic happening everywhere i once heard of a man of god who came for a program and he was preaching and he called somebody he said look at me the person who looked at him became blind at once yes completely blind at once members were clapping people were running to come and drop seed i don't know what they were tapping into but they were running and everybody was happy watch this and then after the guy preached 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 he did everything and then he prayed again and the guy was open and he said for that reason everything that is closed in everybody's life you know I, I open it and you see everybody just shouting amen listen let me tell you listen listen will people get results they will get tremendous results are you hearing what i'm saying because the laws that have been operated are valid spiritual laws but this is the point because it was not initiated and sponsored by the spirit of god although it is correct knowledge it is called witchcraft so it's not about what produces result it's about the spirit of god initiating and sustaining that process hallelujah there are many teachings coming to the body of christ men and women of god who went to lock themselves to pray for three days and seven days or whatever and in the midst of this prayer because many people did not exalt the word above prophecy they had visitations but they were not of god however they were not visitations of inhabitants of the earth and they came and committed to them power and gave them all kinds of things and they came out from all of those experiences and you see power you see anointing but it is not initiated and sponsored by the spirit and the sign is number one the glory never goes to god such kinds of people never give god the glory because it is part of the agreement are you following me now it is god's desire that we grow the bible even said knowledge shall increase but you must guard when the table is set before you you are only permitted to eat of the tree of life there is a kind of knowledge that only puffs up have you seen people hold on i want to say a few things that will challenge you have you seen a lot of people please i don't mean this for criticism or anything have you seen a lot of people who got mad as a result of prayer have you have you seen those kinds of things that somebody got to pray and he started praying until they took him to the psychiatry and locked him i remember a lady years ago this lady was praying in tongues seemingly for about almost 48 hours i was there abu secure this girl was just praying 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 she wouldn't listen to anybody i wish i knew what i know now and the thing confuses the body of christ hallelujah everybody say forbidden knowledge men of god if you're in ministry here you have to be very careful that that insatiable lust for rema and revelation you must guard carefully 
and let this that's why walking in the spirit is the secret it gives you life when you walk in the flesh you may learn a lot of principles that although they are powerful it leads men to death so the more revelation a man is getting the more he's dying not to self dying as a result of the absence of light see this is how you know is one character to know that a man is not of god when you compare the rate of revelation versus the rate of transformation when there is so much word conferences happening conventions happening meetings happening rema upon rema bible study all kinds of things yet you do not see that that word is chaff it lacks the life to build people there is error i hope somebody is learning something here god put two trees and all the trees can supply knowledge for one it is the knowledge that brings life there are certain teachings on deliverance that does not bring life is that true there are certain teachings on deliverance that brings people into bondage because people added bible knowledge plus confessions that they got from people who were once witches and wizards is that true and they added everything and they say if you want the devil to run away from you once it's nine o'clock wear red that that one is not in the bible you see that that is that is deception dimension there i, I is somebody following what i'm saying i apologize if maybe these are the tenants of your church or your ministry i really apologize i love the body of christ but i have to teach you the truth so there is the biblical concept of deliverance for instance then there are others who have spent their entire life interviewing seemingly witches and wizards begging for audience with herbalists to explain to them the realm of the spirit knowing that satan is the father of all liars are you getting my point now and it is on the strength of those information they have built their prayer ministries or built a lot of things so when you want to pray for somebody you look and say uh -uh, i can't pray for you like this you are wearing a black shoe change it into a special kind of slippers that you wear when you enter my my this thing for the power to work this one is astrology and witchcraft is somebody getting what i'm saying or you get all kinds of candles with different colors this flame that flame this flame and you say now come and sit in the midst of it and just be calm as i drive this spirit uh -uh. this is called transcendental meditation this is witchcraft hallelujah yet you come and sit down in the midst of that candle something suddenly happens to you and you start taking first in the class all of a sudden your intelligence is heightened you think beyond your level and because you're hallelujah hallelujah thank you are you following my story please because you are getting results you will be encouraged are you hearing what i'm saying be careful because many people are eating of the forbidden tree they are eating right now today here and now they are getting access to knowledge that seems to be producing results thank you but that knowledge is not of god maybe some of us right here as you are sitting down are already in these deceptions the moment you read those books although they are blowing your mind but something in your spirit starts checking the holy ghost is telling you uh -uh, when did you get into this when did you get into this and you see these books are in our libraries you can get them online many of you have watched every kind of thing you see a man who has supernatural ability to listen to plants and animals and you sit down there are all kinds of books 
people research online how to hear the language of plants and animals and they put all kinds of codes they say recite it by 12 or 1 many christians you get up carry your big head and stand in front of the mirror and now recite it the last you recite it and just wake up and see that it's morning you slept something happened to you you may not know what happened again anytime god wants to take in and bring out of a man sleep happens and god calls adam to sleep hallelujah are you understanding this we're talking about dominion through through spiritual intelligence the knowledge that leads to death i'm going to share with you very importantly very quickly two laws even if it's just in five minutes wherever we stop that's it for the night two important spiritual laws that can help us i'm committed to making sure that god grants us spiritual intelligence that we have knowledge this is what makes you strong in the spirit prayer is good but it's not just enough to pray you must have knowledge so that when you see things you know what laws are in place and you know what to do about them knowledge takes away ignorance knowledge takes away shock from your life so that you are not surprised about anything when you hear that something has happened you don't just panic you understand hallelujah praise the name of the lord law number one is called the law of territory if you want to walk in dominion you must understand this law the law of territory everybody say the law of territory look up please dominion is territorial dominion is territorial even in the satanic organogram they understand the jurisdiction and the boundaries of territories there are spirits and principalities that do not operate in the earth realm it's not their territory of work are you getting me every time they are on the earth realm they are powerless there are certain demonic operations that are territorial i'll give you an instance when you go to certain territories in this nigeria you see that there are certain traits and satanic operations given to that territory when you go outside of the territory it doesn't seem to have a hold on you again is that true and you go into another territory maybe it's drunkenness that is there you go to another territory maybe it's lust and immorality the operations of the kingdom and the operations of the spirit are territorial every man every kingdom citizen must know this abraham come out of your father's house come out of this territory where you are into a land that i will show you and if you do get to that land then i will bless you and you will be a blessing i will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed but that will only happen if you leave one territory to another everybody say dominion is territorial it's a spiritual intelligence that you must understand number two is that you must understand very very clearly that in the place of your assignment that is where you will exercise true dominion everything opens up for you at your assigned territory there is an assigned territory where the spirit of dominion can walk in your life hallelujah this is what a lot of people do not understand please look up you must take out time to hear from god are you getting me as to where he wants you to be at every season not just what you want him to do for you but where your blessings are territorial and isaac sowed in that land 
Genesis 26 from verse 12. And Isaac sowed not just in any land, although there was famine, God told him, This is your territory of dominion. Sow in that land. A man of God may go to Zamfara and sit down and say, Zamfara is not a lucrative place. Let me run to Abuja for ministry. And he goes outside of territory. Are you getting my point? And you see a man struggling in a land of plenty he's struggling yet you will see another man in the same zamfara blessings coming from people those who are born again and those who are not born again because you are in the place of your territory say the law of territory many of us right now are at the face of our lives where we are trusting to know where God wants us to settle for every season. It can change, but that in every season, there is a territory. You miss your territory, you will never walk in dominion. Because where God has assigned you, he has commanded the ravens to feed you. He has commanded the widow to attend to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'll never forget when we finished the crusade in Joss. And the PFN people called me in the particular local government in Joss. And they said, would you come and establish a branch of your ministry? We'll give you an auditorium free and we'll give a few pastors to train. I was happy. I went to God. God said you would die. I told the PFN people, God said I would die. I'm really sorry. I can't go. As simple as that. Many of you would have said, ah, breakthrough. God has buttered my bread and you will go there. That's why you can see a ministry flourishing in a, in a particular place and then they move to a place and it's as though God did not call them again. Favor is a sign that you are in the right place. When I send thee, lackest thou anything? When I send thee, lackest thou anything? By the grace of God at this level of ministry, I can tell you, I am sure that we are in the place assigned. That's why it doesn't matter what venue we use. Whether it is Blue Roof, whether it is Charity and Faith, whether it's whatever. There seems to be grace backing us. So many people have called me. One lady said, them and their family members, they are praying that I must come to Abuja. They say, relocate, your level is bigger than Zaria. I said, I appreciate you. But I remember there was a man called Ahitophel in scripture. Don't let people advise you out of your destiny. They may be genuine. They look at you and say, Kai, Zaria, it's, it's too much for your level. You say it's true. Just that, what will we do? And you start thinking and pack your load out of your destiny into a land where there is no assigned space for you. You get into the land and there is no divine assignment for you. There's no space for you. You keep fighting and struggling with everybody. Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, let us remain in this territory where we are sure that your presence is with us. This may be the answer to some of the tragedy of many of our parents. They got up because of looking for greener pastures. They just packed their load and said, Lagos, here we come. Ten years now, they are still suffering. Every door shuts at your face. It's a sign to go back for retreat and say, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. Where am I missing it? Don't just let jobs and all of these things decide your destiny. I know this looks like a, a stupid statement and many people will criticize me for it. They'll say, are you joking? In Nigeria where there's no job. But you must be careful. You exercise dominion in the place of your territory your territory does not just mean the geography alone it means your jurisdiction of operation are you getting me if i go and enter the prophetic ministry right now as an office i'm not a prophet as an office i may operate in prophetic dimensions but god did not call me as a prophet in, in officially like your office your jurisdiction if i now say i'm going to come in and make sure i prophesy for everybody one by one i give you two weeks 
many of you will start praying and fasting for me because you will start having all kinds of dreams of me missing it you say oh god what is happening this guy is missing this thing there are many men of god who were called to be teachers or pastors but they they got outside of territory are you getting what i'm saying now there are other people who were called into prayer ministries their anointing is the anointing for intercession but they've now begun to teach wealth seminars and teaching all kinds of prosperity conventions that's not wrong except that you have come out of territory everybody say territory you will only walk in your dominion if you confine yourself and limit yourself to your territory your jurisdiction of operation there are certain dimensions of ministry if god instructs me to engage in i will find graces that are called at the heart of that area and bring them it doesn't matter whether i can preach more than them it doesn't matter whether i have more miracles than them uh -uh. it's about the grace and the dominion when a man is in his area of territory you will exercise dominion freely you see why a lot of pastors are struggling you go to a church and copy what a man of god is doing you do not know his his ministerial packaging are you getting my point so many people who are pastors trying to do the work of apostles little persecution comes and they are crying they cannot move forward because see when god calls a man he equips you according to the office when you learn this law you will walk in dominion absolute dominion there are things i have no business doing if god gives me an instruction he will have to give me a special grace for it or direct me to the people who will administer that level of building to the body of christ watch my knee calls it the limitation of the body people struggle because they do not understand their jurisdiction of operation is someone getting blessed tonight your assigned territory god has honored you in the area of catering when it comes to catering you walk in dominion there the next thing you got up and you just heard that people are doing um building materials and you just get up and go there you say i'm supplying building materials your first supply there was trouble second supply 10 years down the line you are still struggling everybody say territory thank you jesus the second law and then we will pray this one is very important it is a law that you must believe in and walk in it it's called the law of exchange this is a powerful spiritual law if you must walk in dominion giving something you love for something you desire is called the law of exchange the law of exchange you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my lord you are my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me you gave your life to set me free and so i lift my voice to you in adoration listen how many of you have heard that a man gave up his ability to give birth to children for money have you heard of that everybody say the law of exchange when you understand this law you will know the reason why evil seems to happen in a place unhindered when the bible says an eye for an eye have you heard that tooth for tooth i've studied it it's not like when i break your teeth you will break back my own to revenge are you getting me it's called compensation 
that means if i do something to you you must take back something that can appease you to the equivalence of the offense are you getting what i'm saying it's called the law of exchange that's where we get trade by butter i give you a cow you must find something that is commensurate to the worth of that cow are you getting me that's why when man fell based on the justice of god god looked around to see what can be given he said if i give gabriel it's not enough if i give michael it's not enough do you know why because angels themselves are imperfect i hope you know it angels excel in light they excel in strength but they are still imperfect do you want me to show you Job? let's look at it one scripture you are the one who said i should show you turn to the book of job sorry about the time we'll round up now he could not give the angels because they are imperfect Job 4. Please project it. Job 4, verse 18 and 19. I want us to read it together. Job 4. Can we hurry up? Our time is. Job 4. Everyone read. Want to read. He charges angels with what? Verse 19. He said even his servants he didn't trust them and even the angels he charged them with foolishness how much more a man that wants God to use him without being trained <laughs> so God could not give Gabriel and Michael and all of these people and so he looked at the perfect one the sinless one and said you are the only one that can go as an exchange for what I desire please listen to me the same principle Satan wanted to use for Jesus Christ he took Jesus to the mountain and he said bow to me in other words let me give you wealth and exchange it with your loyalty for me are you getting my point just bow to me since you are the expression of the Godhead bow to me so that the father will see you bowing to me and I can give you wealth. So when a man goes to meet a herbalist, he tells him, what are you going to give me in exchange? Please listen. I will tell you, this is the reason why many territories are powerful. This is why some of the terrorisms you see in Nigeria are powerful. They always give something in exchange for the authority to invade a territory. That's why they do it military might irrespective. Are you getting my point? When you come to God and say, Lord, I want you to use me. God says, what is the exchange for it? And he say, Lord, take my life. Have you heard that scripture that says, what shall it profit a man if he does what? And what? Loses his soul. That means, he said, Satan, let's do business. And Satan said, of course, I'm a good businessman. I will give you my soul give me the world so that anywhere i do business whether in italy whether in dubai let it work so that i must be the governor of this state or i must be this take my soul so that i will be the reigning musician and nobody can stop me and he says all right let's have the deal and he says take my soul they have received the mark of the beast that's the 666 there it's not something that will be put on their hand they have given their soul they have received the mark are you getting my point so satan comes to you what do you want to give in exchange please listen something 
must be given in exchange if you must walk in true dominion everybody knows this it's not a herbal strategy it's a spiritual strategy i'm walking in the anointing i'm walking in by the grace of god because i received this of grace but something went for it my life my will my ambitions my desires they were laid down that's why i wrote that song take all of me all of me you have my everything that's my deal with god you have my everything are you getting me so my entire life will give him glory the day i compromise on my own part of the deal his mercy will show up but if i walk in rebellion i have broken the deal that's the reason why a man can give an exchange he will say i will give you my firstborn only give me this political position when the firstborn is now born the people come and say oh yeah oh, we gave you the power we gave you the wife where is our firstborn and you say sorry i didn't realize that children are this nice i've changed my mind they say you've changed your mind we will see all of a sudden the child starts getting sick they must collect their child except the power of god intervenes this is the reason why many families are suffering people covenanted families in exchange for money kings covenanted their territories are you hearing what i'm saying they gave it in exchange for protection they gave it there are families that gave in exchange their fertility so no children can happen in that family there are families that traded boys they said there shall be no men take give us might what men would have done let the women in our family do but take all the men and you find out that no matter how people try they will never give birth to men they give birth to men they will die no matter what happens you just hear that he was taking fresh air outside a bike came and carried him are you hearing what i'm saying exchange see these laws are not old testament laws they are spiritual laws they are still working today here and now are you hearing what i'm saying this is the law that terrorists use before they ever carry an assignment they must take out time are you seeing the reason why every time they shed blood people become richer think about it the moment blood is shed somebody makes money exchange 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 are you seeing the reason why the sacrifice of solomon touched the lord he offered a thousand bond offerings it was an expression of his heart god could not stop he came down many of us may never walk in dominion because you are not ready to exchange your life for his life you are not ready to exchange your strength for his strength but tonight how many people are ready to say lord take everything if this is the price for your grace and your glory don't let anybody fool you and say there's no price you go to a herbalist and see if he will just give you power like that look at me there are men who sacrifice their wives for wealth true or false some christians right there are pastors who sacrifice their children for church growth there are pastors who sacrifice their members for expansion i've said it again and again nothing just happens the day jesus will come we have a long world film to watch that's when we will know that most of the things we call coincidences were not coincidences hallelujah listen let me tell you something I will never forget one time i was praying in the night years ago and i prayed and i was dedicating my body unto god i stripped myself the way my mother gave birth to me and i lay down on the floor i said lord let this body become a superconductor of your anointing if there is anything you can do to this mortal body let it carry your power this body cannot be used for sin and hell it, it i dedicate it unto you and god said this is what you are giving me i will put my glory upon your life 
and somebody just comes and says, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the, Lord, the demons are just looking and say, look at all these ignorant people. These are the negotiations that many scientists did with aliens. Are you getting me? Many intelligent people. They said, give us, give us technology. Give us the wisdom you used and gave the pharaohs of old. Give us and let us do supernatural things in exchange. We will give you the souls of men. We will give you mankind. We will give you a lot of things. And it's happening here in the earth. That's why you can see a man sitting down. All of a sudden, within two weeks, this man becomes a mysterious millionaire. Either God has done something to him or the devil has done something. There was an exchange somewhere. A man of God is sitting down and all of a sudden, Power comes upon his life. He begins to do supernatural things. I tell you, there is an exchange. He has either gone to the throne of grace to exchange his life and say, Lord, take it. Take my life and use me for your glory. Or he has gone to a herbalist and say, take my firstborn. Or every two, two years, kill ten members from my church as a sacrifice and let the anointing keep rising. The life that I now live, Paul told us the secret of his anointing. He said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of God. I surrender all to you. Everything I give. I'm teaching you spiritual laws withholding nothing withholding nothing listen you can copy a man if you have not laid down what that man laid down you will never carry what he carries are you hearing what i'm saying you can copy the way he talks you can wear suits like him if you cannot lay down an exchange what that man exchanged in the secret place you will never that's why you can listen to a message that may not be so powerful by a man of god but tremendous grace follows it because there is a fraternity with god that's why you can see a herbalist he can make people millionaires but he lives in a coven it was the exchange for the power he can make people billionaires but he will never stay in a big house he will never wear good clothes he will wear rags papa Deboe, i shared it last week he's made it a vow and a culture that everywhere he goes he will get down on his knees that was his exchange for the kind of glory what are you exchanging let me tell you when you enter into the realm of the spirit you will see men who have exchanged things men who have given their souls to herbalists they want the same job you want they want the same business you want they are killing human beings and sacrificing it and you are just standing lukewarm there is no sacrifice there's no exchange and you believe in the labor market and compete with them there must be an exchange it is this exchange that will end sickness in your body is this exchange that can make angels come and cover your plane so that it will not crash it's not just about you you have exchanged something in the spirit he said i shall not die this is the exchange for living long i will live to declare there are some people that are unkillable it's not about confession i will leave you don't know what they have done in the secret place that's why god can kill a whole nation for the sake of that man jacob have i loved esau have i hated when laban laban did not know the exchange he didn't know what happened between the mother of jacob and esau laban wanted to cheat jacob that anointing came and animals started reproducing after the the the, the colors of jacob's animal and Laban said, ah, I testify that God has blessed me. Listen, when a man has made an exchange in the realm of the spirit, you touch him to your own detriment because there is an altar that speaks for him. My altar is calling you. 
oh God, my altar is calling you, oh God. Listen, this is why you can see certain people shout and say, I can never be poor. They say, I can never die. I've told you, I remember when I packed everything that I had, home and abroad, I put it in one bag and I went to a prosperity convention. My entire life belonging home and abroad, aside from the current clothes that I was wearing, it took a sacrifice to put your family in the covenant of poverty. It will take an exchange to bring them out. Don't let any man fool you. I dragged those things to the altar. I sat down outside like the overflow like this. I know we've taken time, but what I'm sharing is somebody's deliverance tonight. Any powerful man you see from today, let me tell you something, there was an exchange. It's an irrefutable spiritual law, either to God or to the devil. Crowd does not just come. Are you hearing me? Koinonia, people are not just coming because they want to come. There is a force there is the strength of sacrifice unto God. A covenant of teaching truth. It's a fraternity with God. Oh God, bring the people and I will teach them truth. Bring the people and I will teach them no matter what it will cost me. And God said, the deal is done. And a young pastor just gets up and believes that is by church growth principle. You come posters everywhere. Knock from door to door. And the realm of the spirit is saying, do you not know there is a law? My altar, rise up on your feet, is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, hallelujah. I'm going to make an altar call. Your first exchange starts when you come to Jesus Christ. If you have not given your heart to the Lord, there is no exchange. There is nothing that gives you the audacity to walk free from evil. The devil will buffet you. Or if you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing, it's risky. Tonight, run to this refuge called Jesus Christ. If you are here inside and outside, as we prepare to begin to pray, you say, man of God, I want to make up my life with Jesus Christ. I want to stand on a sure foundation. Please leave your seat and come out right now. Whether you are making that decision for the first time or not, inside and outside, take the courage to come out right now. Take the courage to come out right now. God bless you. Take the courage to come out right now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid of anybody. If you are making that decision, God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them inside and outside. It's time to deal with the things that are destroying your destiny. It starts with Jesus. Keep coming. We're out of time. Get tired of your life and say, Lord, this is the first exchange tonight. This is the first exchange. Make it for real. Make it for real. Exchanging your sin nature for his righteousness. Exchanging your weakness for his strength. Exchanging yokes and covenants for his liberty and freedom. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. hallelujah those of you standing i salute you this is the first exchange you're making there's nothing to be ashamed of you will be separated from many things right now hallelujah lift your right hand and say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you tonight i have come before your throne of mercy to exchange my sin for your righteousness to exchange my weakness for your strength goodness the power of god is so strong as i stand here i feel the anointing in a very helping place 
the law of exchange this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit i exchange my weakness for your strength right now in the name of jesus i declare that i'm born again my god spirit of the living god seal this exchange and from today i belong to jesus from today let the blood of jesus speak for me forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus father i pray that as these ones exchange the nature of sin for the righteousness of god i pray that every power that holds them let it live right now in the name of jesus christ they walk in righteousness and it's a new day for them in the name of jesus thank you jesus hallelujah to the name of the lord thank you so much for making this decision i want you to follow the ushers very quickly they'll have your information and you'll be back god bless you thank you so much two prayer points in two minutes and we're done while we are praying these prayers those who are visiting with us or worshiping with us for the first time i like you to come out there is always a prayer and a prophecy so while you pray just come out as you pray just come out as you pray one prayer point oh lord i receive grace to stay in my jurisdiction of operation lift your voice and pray while they are praying first time i start coming out god bless you shake everybody lift your voice and pray lord i receive grace i receive grace in the name of jesus i receive grace in the name of jesus i receive grace god bless you keep coming everyone pray i receive grace i receive grace i receive grace by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah prayer point number two you're going to say lord tonight i exchange my life for your glory go ahead and pray lift your voice pray it from your heart take my life oh god it is true that i want to see your glory in my life but i've been holding back tonight oh god take my life in exchange for your glory in exchange for your power in exchange for your wisdom in exchange for your strength let me live for you all the days of my life and lord i know you are committed to blessing me from today i am untouchable there is an exchange come on prophesy to yourself i am unkillable in the name of jesus there is a sacrifice on the altar from today i enjoy the lifting of god i've given up my life for his glory for his power hallelujah hallelujah thank you so much those of you worshiping with us what a night you will never be the same in the name of jesus i assure you you will return with dramatic testimonies of the hand of god upon your life through the teachings the revelations the prayer something will happen in your life that will set you on fire we want to pray for you and bless you we are anointed and we are blessed in this house as we pray for you i want you to receive it saints of god stretch your hands and pray for them call them blessed it's within your power to bless them you have become a living sacrifice so there is grace for you to speak and it comes to pass there is grace for you to sacrifice you've given him your everything bless them oh god we bless you with hunger for spiritual things we bless you with the power of the holy ghost we bless you with favor 
may your heavens be open you will go back and walk in dramatic miracles and testimonies the favor of god is upon you we bless you with the gift of god's presence upon this house thank you jesus hallelujah thank you so much for worshiping with us this is koinonia we're here every week this is not our permanent venue we're using this for now but we bless you and thank you for coming we honor you and i want you to know that the lord will take you from glory to glory in the name of jesus i'd like you to please follow the ushers the gentlemen in red and black and they'll warmly welcome you and give you some information and you'll be back celebrate them hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching